Well, we are almost literally hours away from what has got to be one of the greatest presidential warm-up acts of all time. It's the Wisconsin recall election pitting Governor Scott Walker against the challenger Tom Corbett. doesn't get too much bigger than this. In fact, it's almost as big as a Packers-Bears game. <laughs> Tom Barrett. <laughs> yes, More Tom Barrett, here. sorry. And here to join in to talk to, about the election, uh, Wall Street Journal editorial page editor Paul Jago. Wisconsin native. Dave. Wisconsin native indeed. Green Bay. Uh, you know, Paul, the melodrama has gotten so huge around this event, it's almost gotten where it's hard to focus on what really is at stake here. Just bring, bring, the, bring this election back into focus for us. Well, and, and specifically what's at stake is Scott Walker's agenda uh, and his collective bargaining, uh, in particular, uh, limitations on uh, collective bargaining for public employee unions. He reduced their collective bargaining rights. He basically said you have to make more contributions to health care and pensions and you will no longer have monopoly position in dealing with uh, state politicians. Uh, that sent the unions into a tizzy. They're trying to recall him in essence to repudiate that agenda and recall him. Well you've got National Democrats though uh, now hinting that this was a mistake. Well, and that suggests that the, it'd be a mistake for something beyond Wisconsin. Well, yes, but I think they, they thought it was a mistake because a lot of voters, um, whether or not they like Scott Walker or not, they don't like recalls because they figure, don't we do this every four years? We had an election. Somebody won. You're trying to repudiate that election before you really your time, and I think that that helps Walker in this. I don't know how many voters feel that way, but there is a sense of that. It's going to cost, I would, eighteen million dollars yeah, just huge. to do the recall. It doesn't count the money spent by both sides. That's just the administrative cost. So um, I think that helped. That a lot of Democrats also felt. We've got a presidential race to run. We've got a Senate race in Wisconsin, an open Senate seat. Herb Cole is retiring, Senator. They want to hold that Senate seat. We can spend all that money in Wisconsin now. We're going to have less in November. Some of the Democrats have uh, criticized President Obama for not coming to Wisconsin to uh, campaign for, uh, for Mayor Barrett. Do you think this is a legitimate criticism? I mean, we get to the point in these presidential elections where presidents start to say, boys, you're on your own. I've got my own uh, office well, to protect. I think if you're a union head, like Jerry McEntee of the Association of uh, Municipal and County, and they're essentially state employees, right. I can understand why you're sore. President, you want the president to come in, raise the profile of the issue, see if he can drive turnout. But the pre I also sympathize probably more with the president's operatives, just in a pure political sense. Remember, the president went into Massachusetts ahead of Scott Brown's uh, race, lost. He went into New Jersey and Virginia in 2010 for those governor's races, lost. Both were, because he showed up, deemed to be humiliations for the president, and the press corps played it up as such. I think this close to a presidential election, they don't want to take that risk. I'll tell you the what though, Dan, I'm a little more surprised that Mitt Romney hasn't gone to Wisconsin. Yeah, I wondered about that myself. And I think there, it's, it, it's worrisome in two senses. One, that he's not willing to associate with a reform governor. You know, he wants to maybe separate himself too much from the controversial parts of that agenda. That's not very encouraging. And second, it, call, it, it, it makes you wonder, are they gonna be, these guys gonna play it safe the whole time? think they can win because Obama's unpopular and the economy is bad, it's worrisome. Well, I think to some extent you put your finger on it. They, both sides are worried about the effect that a loss on one side or the other can have in the media because the media effect these days is just so powerful. I mean, you don't just lose, you lose big, you're flattened. And nobody has more at stake in this election than organized labor. The unions yeah. are all in. And they're afraid, I think, of a demoralization effect if um, um, leading into November, if they show, oh my gosh, we've invested so much in this. I mean, the MSNBC, Ed Schultz was the, 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 the host was there, but you know, night after night after night, they made this look like it was some kind of, you know, democratic revolution in Russia or you know, uh, China. Uh, it really was just pr trying to protect and preserve what I think are monopoly privileges and what the voters of Wisconsin, I think, understood if we're going to get any chance to have taxpayer control over these public unions, 
Um, we've got to get rid of collective bargaining. You know, this isn't in the Constitution, Dan. This yeah. was only put into Wisconsin law in 1959 under Gaylord Nelson, a very liberal governor. And I've sort of thought all through this recall, on, uh, an issue that's gotten a little bit lost is Wisconsin has a, a, a weak economy right now. And while collective bargaining rights are at issue, I think there's also a question of what what Wisconsin needs going forward into the future to get itself back in the economic game. Yeah, I think ultimately, particularly the, the uh, Wisconsin economy uh, is a little stronger than some parts of the, uh, of the country now. But what you saw was because of union contracts, the school uh, property taxes kept rising mm. and rising in a lot of these school districts. 2011, for the first time since 1998, property taxes actually fell. Now some of that's probably reduced housing values, but they've been going up for so many years in a row that this is a rather extraordinary event. So you have to reduce, oh, the, these states in the Midwest, these reform governors understand, you need to reduce the costs to business and you need to increase the incentive for people to stay, your best people to stay and your best businesses to stay. Yeah, good point. We talk all the time about the great Midwestern work ethic, but if you're going to work that hard, it's kind of nice to keep some of the money you earn.